welcome on board National Geographic Endurance for this amazing voyage to the White Continent, Antarctica. It doesn't get any better than this. We're going to travel south of the Antarctic Circle, visit secluded bays, get to know the continent's penguins, seals, hopefully some whales, We're very excited that you're here with us. It's going to be a great trip. Welcome on board. Here we are in the Drake Passage, the famous Drake Passage. We've actually got pretty good conditions as the Drake Passage goes. We're on our way deep south. We're hoping to cross the Antarctic Circle tomorrow afternoon, but we will be the first passenger ship uh, to get down there. So we're really looking forward to explore and seeing what true expedition is like alone in Marguerite Bay. Pushing south this early in the season, down below the Antarctic Circle, we're really pushing the ship to what she was built for and what she was designed to be doing, uh, which was getting down amongst the pack ice deep in Antarctica and getting the best experience we can for our guests. We're in the Bellingshausen Sea, quite a ways offshore right now, and I've never been out in this region before and it's astounding to see so many light mantled albatrosses and Antarctic petrels, fulmers and Pintado petrels, Wilson storm petrels. I mean this is a, amazing to see such a big population of birds and the species diversity is remarkable. We've been traveling for two days now and we've come to a very important part of our journey. We are crossing the circumpolar current. This is the Antarctic polar front or the Antarctic convergence. They follow each other. So around Antarctica, there's a major current called, called the Antarctic circumpolar current. This basically splits the Southern Ocean from the other oceans of the world, the Atlantic, the Pacific, and the Indian Oceans. So once you move across this boundary, water temperatures will drop from about six degrees centigrade to that of about two degrees centigrade. We're entering a brand new ocean. Today we did our biosecurity process, checking to make sure we're not bringing any seeds, grasses, soils, anything that might interfere with Antarctica's pristine environment. We're about to cross the Antarctic Circle. This is a very important part of our journey because we now have nearly 24 hours daylight. And 24 hours daylight means there's so much more feeding opportunities for species in the water, especially phytoplankton at the base of the food web, which is so important for all the species that we find around Antarctica. It's about as Antarctic as it gets. This is very exciting. We've made our very first landing and we're on the continent. This is at Red Rock Ridge. 
you can't really see the color so much right now under these conditions but it's some nice volcanic geology around us. This is interesting because now we've got granite rocks added by glacial action. But there's a very healthy Adelie colony that we all got to see. They seem as excited to see us as we were to see them. Thought we'd make it to the peninsula for sure, but we're actually on the land and it's just, uh, it's beyond belief. It's also nice to see some behavior too. We've learned a lot about penguins in just our very first stop. This is unbelievable. I love penguins and just to see them in nature, they're amazing. This place is spectacular. So I actually saw a penguin with a rock in its mouth run over to its nest and place the rock down. So, I mean, they're just everywhere and it's spectacular. You only have to look at them, actually, don't you? I mean, they are aesthetically such a beautiful animal. I mean, their eyes are so pretty, and they are small and cuddly. This is everybody's dream of a cuddly penguin. And our question's really what penguins are doing in a changing world. They're changing their distribution and some of their behavior. So we're trying to measure that everywhere we go. We fly drones and that gives us a count of the colony as a whole. We have cameras set up and they take a photo nearly every hour. So we get the behavior, we get the timing of breeding, we get reproductive success and things like that. So I'm actually using the drone to double check the extent of the colony. And then finally, the most important is we pick up a lot of poop. One of the things we are trying to understand is whether there are particular levels of stress associated with being in different parts of the range. Poo is a very natural sample that tells us your stress, your diet, and also what diseases you might have. Chinstraps, Gentus, and Adelis look very similar, have very similar size, and nevertheless, they occupy very different ecological niches. They are the penguins that are capable of breeding further south. We don't know why remarkably similar animals have such differences in behavior and ecology. Hitchhiking on ships means we can get around a huge number of sites every year. That's our goal, to do that without any disturbance other than coming here once a year and collecting all the data. So this afternoon we got a second landing on Jenny Island in Marguerite Bay. We're here looking for and found southern elephant seals. Southern elephant seals have come up here on shore to rest in between feeding sessions. They feed on deep dwelling creatures like squid. They're resting, but they're also snuggling, sharing their warmth with one another. We've got several females as long, along with males, and we've seen lots of big yawns, big vocalizations, and lots of exciting behavior.
Here we are, just very close to Porquaf Pa Island, which was the name of Jean Baptiste Charcot's second ship. And we are pretty far south, down on the western side of the peninsula. And we're down here because sometimes the weather doesn't give you many options of where to go and you need to be flexible. So we're here in this beautiful bay, going to explore some ice and spend the morning here before we need to get actually back out and make our way back north to try to avoid some heavy weather that's coming in. We are surrounded by ice, one of my favorite things about Antarctica. And we have lots of different types of ice. You have first, you have ice from glaciers and you have ice that just forms from the sea, sea ice, and they're totally different things. Out here, we have a lot of ice calving off the glaciers. We have brash ice, which are really bits and pieces, very small, less than six feet across and barely going down into the water. And then from there, we move up to different sizes. We have growlers and bergy bits the icebergs, and then the biggest ones that you can sometimes get are those tabular icebergs that break off of ice sheets. Very large, they can be hundreds of miles long, sometimes as big as Jamaica, but we're gonna go out, and so that's what we're seeing today. So there is some weather chasing us north and today we're at Des Moines Point. Thankfully this morning we were able to make a landing in beautiful white conditions. There was light snow initially and deep snow on the ground. We got to have a look at a rescue hut. This was owned by the British Antarctic Survey in the early 70s. Although it's considered an historic monument, it's a relatively young one. We got to see the provisions and stores inside. On a day like today, when the weather is breaking, you can see really how this rescue hut could be a godsend for somebody in need. The rescue huts are used in case of emergency, emergency supplies where someone can come and get food and shelter if they need it. As we're coming north, we're now north of the Antarctic that's Circle. Right. We're meeting a new species which lives further north, and that's the Gentoo penguin. And today was our first time seeing the Gentoo penguin, and they're quite distinctive, they have a very different sound. We were watching them getting ready for breeding, so they're not quite on their nests yet. They're not uh, seabirds, but they do go by water on a big ship. <laughs> but in the, they're in the right location. They're just basically waiting for more summery weather to arrive. Well, everybody needs a name. And these Gentoo penguins are Harvey. such an amazing experience to have so many animals around you and these penguins are just completely indifferent to our presence. They're here waiting for breeding to begin or waiting for nesting to begin. And as the weather hit, the weather really broke down and we got a taste of Antarctic weather and its potential even in summertime. So we made our retreat back on the Zodiacs, back to the ship.
And you can just barely see through the visibility in the snow. There's two mountain peaks ahead of us. They are either called Una's Peaks or Una's Tits. We are at the southern end of the Gerlach Strait, so we're just around the corner from the La Mer Channel. So Una was a woman who worked for the British Antarctic Survey in the 1970s. Some of the stories say that she was the last woman the men for British Antarctic Survey saw before they came south. Uh, I'm gonna get us closer to the shore and see what we can find. The growlers, the really, really small ones that they make that nice growling sound when they go past your ship. So you may have been woken up by that this morning. And you've got the bergy bits, which are a little bit bigger. And then anything five meters in size above the surface of the water is an iceberg. Farther off in the distance, but you can see some tabular bergs over there. Um, the flat topped ones back at the entrance. Views like this of the backside of Bernard Island is so cool just to see what a glaciated landscape looks like. It doesn't have to be one perfect glacier flowing down through a fjord valley. This area that we're looking at right now has a lot of pressure from all that snow and pressure under gravity as well because you can start to see these big cracks and crevices and just how three-dimensional this structure and landscape is, which is really cool. We are having a gorgeous evening at the Enterprise Islands. And just found this shipwreck, the Governor, that was whaling down here in 1914-1915. It was actually used as a factory ship, so they would bring the whales up to this ship to be processed in the whaling industry. Now, imagine you're on a vessel, 40 meter vessel, with 5,000 cubical meters of whale blubber and a fire started. I got you the bingo. That's all I must say. Ready to look at the best side of the chin strap? <laughs> so now we've seen the gentoos, the delis, and the chin straps. And you can see that this iceberg has flipped, right? Because you could see that the snow on top. There you go. What a lovely way to end our day, cruising around this sheltered, marvelous area with gorgeous ice around us and a beautiful sunset. Antarctica isn't usually what first comes to mind when you think of going scuba diving somewhere, but it's one of my favorite places anywhere in the world to explore. These are kelp forest ecosystems. We have a huge variety of kelp species here. Everything from smaller 
species of red algae in the shallows to huge grandifolios, great leaf species of kelp that are massive blades. The animals that we see underwater in Antarctica are mostly invertebrates. These are animals without backbones. And although they sound very simple, these are some of the most colorful and complex and well-adapted animals that we find here. The ocean covers more than 70% of our planet and life below the surface is weird and wonderful and very important to all of our survival. It's incredibly colorful and diverse and it's such a treat to be able to explore and share what would otherwise be out of sight and out of mind. On this trip, we had a special opportunity to dive on the wreck of the Gouverneurin in Enterprise Islands. And it operated as a factory ship, essentially a floating whaling station. Catcher boats that caught whales during the whaling period would bring them alongside big ships like the Gouverneurin to process their whale catch. It really is amazing to see how much life can grow in these cold waters with the right substrate. Especially the soft-bodied organisms like these massive chandeliers of sponges, huge anemones, and even the weird and wonderful brittle stars. But as we move away from the wreck, the experience changes dramatically because we come across what I can only describe as an elephant graveyard of bones of the largest animals to have ever lived on this planet, the blue whales. This dive is a heartbreaking reminder of our actions in history as humans. Really heartwarming to remember we are capable of doing the right thing and giving nature a chance to recover. This is the hardest continent to get to, by far the most remote and remarkable continent to be on. So we're here at Nico Harbor, the penultimate landing for our expedition. It's a wonderful site of a Gentoo penguin colony. It's a great opportunity for wildlife and landscape photography. You can see there's a big glacier behind us, and there's a lot of action with the Gentoos coming and going to the harbor here. We watched as they shoveled the snow enough for us to have a way to come up and see the penguins. Antarctica has a special place in my heart. It's one of my all-time favorite places to travel to. We got a lot of action going on, a little bit of fighting. The penguins are in mass. They're making their route down to the sea here to go out for feeding. It's a great opportunity. I love when you're photographing wildlife and it's coming towards you. I always know what my subject is, but sometimes I need to find the background. I need to find the setting, the perfect setting to make a, a beautiful composition. It's extraordinary and it's tragic to think that some of this may be gone because of the way we behave as a species toward this extraordinary planet. I love layers in a photograph and I love looking for a good subject with beautiful background behind it and some nice light. Today has been magical. And here we are in a place where we've seen a glacier calf. We've watched penguins build nests with rocks in their beaks. It's been astounding. Today we have some really nice soft overcast light, which is great. You don't have a lot of harsh shadows. I 
just am in total awe of the scenery here. It's uh, spectacular and the trip has been fabulous. When they toboggan on their bellies on land, it looks kind of like they're trying to swim. I'm just in awe, absolutely in awe. Not everyone gets to come to a place as far away as this, the end of the world basically, having the creature comforts of home while also being able to experience penguins, which are the cutest of the animals, but also the hardest to get to. If you want to feel really small in this giant universe, come to Antarctica, because there's so much life happening around you on this ice, and I mean, truly an extraordinary experience. It's been on my bucket list, which I turned into my to-do list, so I got here so I could experience this, and it is a, a majestic experience. They've been struggling to go in and out through the ice boulders here and once they saw our landing then they started coming over and we have to take turns now and wait for them to go out every now and then look at that surge there's been some glacial activity a calving somewhere what a great opportunity to be here in antarctica take some photographs and bring home some wonderful memories that we'll keep forever I think it's a blessing every time we get a chance to come down here. I'm not plunging anywhere. <laughs> we will be ready to begin the polar plunge in approximately 15 minutes time. Jump in the Antarctic water. <laughs> Just going for a swim. <laughs> 